it going guys? Michael Shamblum here with another Lightroom processing tutorial. Today I thought it'd be fun to process one of my favorite waterfall shots from Oregon. And this is kind of a case where less is more in processing. So this isn't a photo that needs a ton of dramatic processing, doesn't need exposure blending or anything like that. A few Lightroom sliders, some gradients, and really playing around with the tones and the luminance, we can get some really good results out of this photo. So let's go ahead and get started. So this was taken at Ramona Falls in Oregon. I'm using my 70 to 200 lens. It's an F4 for Canon. I'm also using my Canon 6D. The reason I wanted to go telephoto with this is so that I could really zoom in on a certain area of the waterfall and isolate it in the scene. And I wanted to capture this little rainbow that was kind of going across the waterfall. So uh, a little bit of the light coming from the side was picking up a lot of that mist from the waterfall and creating these beautiful shadows and this awesome rainbow. So that was the main focus. Uh, I'm using ISO 100, so pretty low on my ISO. Clean file, not a lot of grain. F11 to get everything in focus, so um, everything is nice and crisp. And then I'm using um, 0.4 of a second for my shutter speed because I wanted, I wanted a long exposure because I didn't want to see every individual little water droplet. I wanted to really showcase the motion of the waterfall, but I didn't want to take the shutter speed too far. I didn't want to go too long with it to make the water super milky. I wanted to still see some of that crisp detail in the individual streams in the waterfall. So if we sharpen this image, we can see each um, individual line coming down. Whereas if we were going to do maybe like a two second or longer exposure, we might not see as much detail in the individual falls. So I was doing a long exposure, but I didn't want the exposure to be too long. Now, um, like any processing I do in Lightroom, I like to just go through the sliders, go through and do all my uh, global edits, which is any edit that affects the entire image as a whole. And then I go through with some gradients and brushes to do my more selective edits after that's done. And I'm going to go through these sliders, but then I generally will go back on a few things after the edit starts to come together. So I may bring in contrast, and then later on I may change the contrast and the white balance after I've already played around with the photo. So, you know, if you're doing your own individual edits, just don't be afraid to go back on all of these different sliders. You can pretty much change anything by going to the history panel anyways. So um, you're never really going to destroy your file because you're not actually processing your file itself. You're processing the metadata of your raw file. So your original raw file is always going to be there. The photo is just a touch overexposed. I could go high key with the edit, but I think I want to go a little bit more low key. I want to go darker and really bring out that rainbow. So I'm going to take the exposure down. I have the highlight warning up here showing red, so this is the, the little area of the photo that's blown out, and we can go ahead and change that and get rid of that pretty easily. We can go through and just take down the highlights a little bit. I already got rid of that, that little blown out highlight. Brought down some of the highlights, can bring up the shadow slider, taking up some of those shadows, and then bringing up the blacks is going to take it's going to bring up some of the darkest tones in your photograph. And then I'm going to go up and increase some of that contrast as well. Now, normally I'd say stay away from the clarity slider um, er around areas of tonal contrast, like areas that are super dark and super bright. You can get some really bad haloing by using the clarity slider. But for this photo, since we're shooting kind of this diffused, misty scene, if we use a bit of clarity, it's not going to decrease the quality too much. It's just going to bring in a little bit more detail. So that's looking good. I always like a little bit more vibrance and saturation to my photos. The difference between the two, um, the saturation slider, is just going to bring up the saturation of all of your colors in the photo. Whereas the Vibrant slider is a little bit more smart, it's more of a smart tool, and it tries to 
find the colors in the image that are less saturated and more dulled, and it tries to bring more of those up instead of increasing colors in the image that are already pretty saturated. Most of the time it does a pretty good job, but in this case, a lot of our colors are pretty much the same saturation value. There's really no colors in this image that are oversaturated, so we can bring up the vibrant slider and the saturation slider. Um, so you have your sharpening. We can add just a little bit of sharpen amount if we want to bring up the sharpness. Uh, noise reduction, I don't really need it for this photo, but um, if you find that your photo is getting a little noisy, add some of that. Just don't go too far with the noise reduction. I, I probably wouldn't go over half with it. One thing I like to just apply to every single photo across the board, regardless of what it is, is remove chromatic aberration. And what that's going to do is it's going to remove these little colorizations on the edges between tonal contrast. So if you have an edge um, where something is super dark and then something super bright, you might see weird little strips of magenta and green. Um, so go ahead and click remove chromatic aberration and the program has an algorithm to get rid of that. Just one click. So now we've gone through and done our um, global edits to the entire photo. I'm noticing there's one or two things I'd like to do. I still want to take the exposure down a little bit to really bring out that rainbow more. And then I'm actually going to add a little bit of magenta to this photo. So just a few points on magenta. And then I actually want to bring in a little bit more warmth to the top of the highlights um, at the top of the image, and it's going to dull these blues in the water just a little bit. So even just bringing that a few points, you start to see more of the colors at the top of the image. Now I already know a few different things I want to do here with the gradients. So I can use some regular gradients that will allow me to gradate the image and um, individually affect certain parts of the image, and then I can use radial gradients for my vignettes, and then even use the brush tool to just brush in a little bit more color and contrast. I'm going to do my gradient tool, and I'm going to just click and drag to create the gradient. And I think I just want to affect this little area where the highlights stop. So you can see it already added a little bit of clarity. Um, when you start applying some of these brushes and gradients, sometimes it just auto defaults. But actually for this one, I may actually add a little bit more clarity to the top of the photo anyways. So I'm just going to bring that in. Um, and I'm going to take down the highlights and the white slider to bring back some of those brighter tones. So just a little bit of the white slider and a little bit of the highlight slider. And then we could even bring up the saturation a touch. And make this area a little bit more warm with a few points too. And then one thing that's cool is if uh, if you want to add just a touch of haze to the photo, a good slider for this is actually the dehaze slider. So the dehaze slider will get rid of haze, but it can also bring in a little bit more haze. So if you wanted a little bit more haze up here at the top where the light is hitting, you could take down the dehaze slider just a few points. Not much, maybe two to three. Actually, I'm probably going to do two. A little goes a long way with the slider. And then we probably got to take the exposure down a little bit. You can see it added just a little bit of glow up here at the top of the photo. All right, so now that we've done that, we can go through with a radial gradient and create our vignette. And I want the vignette to kind of go around this bottom area of the waterfalls. I want more of the attention to be over here at the water or at the uh, rainbow and up here at the top where the light is striking. So I'm going to start the gradient right about here and make a nice big gradient 
and then we're just going to affect what's on the outside of the circle. So again, it auto defaulted to adding clarity. I'm going to take that down. We can also change the feather a little bit if we want more of a feather. And I'm just going to take the exposure down. Really bring the brighter tones into the middle and the top of the photo rather than towards the bottom. And we can bring down the white slider, bring down a little bit of the highlight slider as well, and even take down some of the clarity around the edges of the photo. And now even just to bring a little bit more attention to these areas, I'm going to take a brush and I may actually brush in with a little bit of clarity and a little bit of contrast. And let's just see what this does. So I'm, I'm using a brush with, I'm using a pretty soft brush, 100% um, uh, feather, a decent amount of flow and a decent amount of density. And I'm just going to brush along the, the rainbow, and brush along this area where the highlights are striking. And then I think I'm even going to bring up the saturation just a little bit more so that rainbow really does pop. All right. So as you can see here, let's go back to our original. You can see our original. While a nice composition, um, obviously we had the idea of what I wanted here. I knew I wanted that light striking down and the rainbow right in the middle of the waterfall, but um, it's a little overexposed, a little harder to see the colors, and it, it's a little harder um, for the viewer to travel around the photo and land in the, in the spot that I want uh, the viewer to look. So changing around a few things and using some gradients, we really brought in the light and we're able to bring out some of those tones. I hope this tutorial helps. Uh, let me know if you use this tutorial for any of your own photos. Um, let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Of course, you can subscribe for more uh, free tutorials. I have a bunch on my website as well. And then I also have some longer, more advanced tutorials on my website if you'd like to check those out um, as well. Anyways, thanks again for watching and uh, yeah, happy shooting.